Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2023 NCAA Rowing Championships. This is our final day of racing. We're going to see some amazing races up front. This is the Division Three or Division One Grand Final Day, where we will see Grand Finals, Petite Level Finals, as well as C and D Level Finals for fours, second eights, and the first eights. And we will be crowning a team champion at the end of the day. First up, it will be the Division One fours. This is final number four, or the D level final. We have four boats on the course. In lane two, George Washington. Lane three, Jacksonville. George Washington. Lane four, Jacksonville. Northeastern. Northeastern. Lane five, Navy. Attention. Go. And we have a start in our first, ra the first race of the final day here at the 2023 NCAA Women's Rowing Championships with George Washington, Jacksonville, Northeastern, and Navy on the course and well underway through their start sequences. We should start seeing these crews lengthen out off of those early high strokes to get into their base rhythms that will carry them down the race course to see who will come across the line looking at places 19 through 22 in the country in this event, in this fourth level final here this morning. And these are the last races of the day for all of these athletes. They've made it this far. They've gotten all the way to the end of the line of their progression in their events. And really competitive first race to start off our day. That's exactly what we like to see, get our adrenaline going. Hopefully we can keep it going with some more amazing racing all day long. Looks like those two boats in the center are the ones that have pushed out just a little bit of Jacksonville and Northeastern. Going with them on the, on the far side is Navy. as they are now through 500 meters of the Division One Fours Final Four. And these points are very important for the team trophy. Every single stroke that each of these athletes are taking matter. That's Northeastern there in your picture, our early and still leaders. Indiana. They took over the lead after about Lane the first 250 six. meters or so. And ever so, ever so often, you know, just every couple of strokes just inched out from there. Jacksonville and Navy are the two crews that were going right along with them. Early on, it was Jacksonville keeping pace with them the best. Then it was Navy, and now it looks as though Jacksonville has uh, snuck past Navy for that second place position, but as all crews are approaching 750 meters down, it looks like Navy on the outside would like to be on the move. They still haven't quite made it back level with Jacksonville, but they are the crew that looks as though they might be taking some sort of uh, a part of their race plan, taking a move right now to get back into one of those top two positions. Northeastern, though, still sitting out in front, looking very composed, rowing a little bit longer than the two trailing crews, and a, and a little more direct to the water as well, which is helping them stay out in front by just about a boat length over places two and three, Navy and Jacksonville, with George Washington on the inside lane uh, in fourth. Syracuse. You come to Nationals, Lane try to win four. races at Nationals right now. Sitting in the first place position, which would give them a 19th place finish in the country in the Division I women's fours is Northeastern. And they have hit the halfway point, has Northeastern. 
but Navy really pressing just above them on the race course. And so we do have a, a quite a competitive race for these last thousand meters. And we'll see what happens. It's really those two boats in Jacksonville still in the mix. And this third 500 is going to be pretty critical probably to set up these boats for what they're going to do in that last 500 where their season is on the line and everything that they have left in the tank, everything they have trained for to get ready for these championships is going to be left out here on the water in Camden Park, New Jersey. That move that Navy put on right around 750 meters, right as they got into about 1,000 meters in, their blades started to get a little cleaner, which allowed them to make even more of an advance. So they are still looking to continue that advance that they set about 250 meters to go on Northeastern. But Northeastern is still holding them off in that lane four with those white and red and black blades. Now well into the, to the last 750 meters or so of this race, we will look to see if Northeastern will be forced to push a little higher in their rate, push a little more in the legs to make sure that they can send off both Jacksonville and Navy, who are really very tight still for second and third behind our early and still leaders, Northeastern. With everything that Jacksonville and, Nor and Navy have done, Northeastern has still maintained their control of this race, and they've fended off. They've likely stayed just very internal and focused on what they're doing. That way they don't let what's happening around them get into their heads, manage your lane, your race, your crew, and allow that to tell the story by the time the finish line comes. Again, this is four places, 19 through 22 in the country in the Division One fours. As we pass it off to Adrian here with less than 500 meters to go, still very little to separate those top three crews on the inside lanes of Northeastern, Navy, and Jacksonville with George Washington on the inside in lane two. And here we go, final 500 meters here in our first final of the day. These are the Division One fours. We're looking at some really tight racing here up front with Northeast Eastern on the lead, followed by Jacksonville and Navy so close to each other. And indeed, looking at the times coming out of the semifinals, both Jacksonville and Northeastern pulling almost identical times with Navy just a bit behind. George Washington there in fourth place, just a little bit off the pace, but again, really historic moment for them to be able to participate here at the 2023 NCAA Championships. The revolutionaries of George Washington doing a nice job here coming in to the final strokes of their championship. But here we go into the red buoys. It is the Huskies of Northeastern continuing to hold off both Jacksonville and Navy. Jacksonville doing a nice job here as they attempt to improve upon their finishes from past NCAA appearances. They've been here seven times, and indeed they are doing their best to try and catch Navy, catch Northeastern, but Navy doing a nice job holding them off. Final strokes here. It's, it's Northeastern coming with their bow first across the line, followed closely by Navy. And here come the Dolphins of Jacksonville. Four minutes. All right, and here comes George Washington. Great racing here for the Revolutionaries.
three minutes. All right, coming up next, it will be the second eighth in final B, again with four boats on the course. In lane two, Jacksonville. Lane three, Northeastern. Lane four, Gonzaga. Lane five, Navy. I'm actually going to make a quick correction here. We are coming up on the sea level final for the fours. So let me give you new lane assignments. Sorry about that. This will be lane one, Gonzaga. Lane two, Pennsylvania. Lane three, Rutgers. Lane four, Syracuse. Lane five, USC. Lane six, Indiana. To start here in this next race of the morning, the Division One Fours Sea Level Final. This is for places 13 to 18 in the country. This is for points toward that team total that will ultimately decide where your whole team falls in the nation. So each boat out here on the race course earns points towards an overall team total that will ultimately then decide where they fall. So you have a placement within your race, but then there's another placement within your overall team standings. And that's really, at least through how I was raised through the sport, really where it all lies, the, the beauty of the total team. Gonzaga, Pennsylvania, Rutgers, Syracuse, Southern California, Indiana. Attention, go! All right, here we go. Six votes across. This is final three of the Division One. Fours. And as you were saying, Lindsay, all the points extremely important to each of these teams. Where they finish in each of the three boats is going to determine how they finish as a team. And we've seen team championships come down to the fours. They uh, sometimes change the orders of some of these events, but I can remember about Minnesota, where it came down to the fours. It was literally, literally the last race of the day, and uh, because the uh, the teams had their eights on shore, it was quite madness as they came down trying to root on their, their four to win them a, a, a team national championship. Looking early on here at what's happening, it does look like uh, the boat in lane four, that's the boat from Syracuse, maybe with just a slight lead, so close to call. One of those situations, Syracuse and Rutgers are stroke for stroke. Just behind them is Pennsylvania. Those are your top three that have pushed out. Syracuse with an early lead out of their start sequence, but as the boats lengthened out to their base rhythms, Rutgers that allowed them to regain a little bit of ground on that early jump that Syracuse had, as well as uh, 
Indiana is still hanging in there on that outside lane as well up there in lane six, but it is still Rutgers and Syracuse in the middle lane. Syracuse in that dark hole. That will help those of you viewing on the screen kind of keep a better eye on them even without having to count lanes. So Syracuse in the darker hole, Rutgers in the lighter hole with the red blades. Those are the two boats that are starting to slip away and separate themselves from the pack a little bit. Uh, it is... Um, uh, Pennsylvania is also in there, but it is Indiana on the outside. Keep an eye in, on Indiana in the outside lane in lane six, at least for now, as these boats are approaching 750 meters in because they are hanging with the speed that's happening up in front. Southern California, Southern California and Gonzaga are the other two boats on the field, and those are the two that are currently sitting in fifth and sixth. Pennsylvania, Syracuse, and Rutgers are those crews that were eked out early on in the racing, very close. And lots of tight racing over the weekend that has sent some crews to the C&D level finals straight from Heath Day since we did away with the reps at the Division One level this year. There was no second chance. You had to get it done on day one. And so now what we're seeing on the course today is let's do everything we can to get as, as have the best race that we possibly can to earn as many points as possible. This is for places 13 to 18 in the country, and there are points on the line here. Still Syracuse as we approach 1,000 meters down. Still Syracuse with a slight edge over Rutgers, who is battling hard and looking to take over that lead as we cross into the 1,000. Blades going nice and direct to the water. Looks like they may be taking a move because they really want that lead, David. Indeed they do. This is a very close race. Boathouse, in particular, you're seeing these boats really go after it. I mean, really throwing energy into it. They're passing the They're into the third 500. They are really having to press hard to keep that energy and momentum up to, to put themselves in a position to finish off what has kind of become this match race in the last 500 meters between uh, the boats from Rutgers and Syracuse. Great shot there, just how close it is. It's essentially stroke for stroke. I'm even looking at the uh, stroke cadences without pressing the buttons. Very similar in terms of the strike rate. And then even looking behind, there are precious points up for grabs. Three boats connected. You've got Indiana all the way at the top. Just below them is Southern California. And then uh, on the race course below, uh, records is Pennsylvania. And so those are the five boats that are in the picture. They're all, again, going for these precious team points. And it's still a match race up front, Lindsay. No matter how much I talk, they're still there. They're still back and forth. And they're still throwing punches at one another are the boats from Rutgers and Syracuse as we pass it to Adrian. Well, thank you, David. But what I am looking at is a huge move that USC just took to overtake Indiana for that third place position. So we talk about points, and that's exactly what this is all about, USC trying to come up and gain a little bit more ground on Indiana and maybe even eat into both Syracuse and Rutgers' lead. Syracuse still holding on to that top spot now by one full length over Syracuse. Between those two boats, it's back by about a half a length or more of open water to now third place USC. Indiana still in fourth, just ahead of Penn. Penn also just hanging in there, maintaining about the same speed and distance between Indiana for most of this race. A little bit off the bat, it is Gonzaga. Gonzaga here for the ninth time, I think. They have arguably one of the best fan bases here at the NCAA championship. So great to see from so far away across the country. 
and Gonzaga doing a nice job as they battle it out for places 13 through 18 in the country. Really just such an honor to be here. But right now, it is Syracuse continuing to walk away from the field. Rutgers chasing. USC also seeing how much ground they can make up. They had really a phenomenal move there at the thousands. What a great third 500, and they are showing their top end speed as they work that sprint. Really efficient and effective here for the Trojans coming into that third place position. And then look at Penn. Penn moving themselves into the fourth place position, overtaking Indiana. Great moves all around. Indiana coming in fifth. And then here comes the Gonzaga. Great racing all around there in that last final. Up next, it will be the second eight. The, this is final D uh, with four boats on the course. We're looking at lane two, Jacksonville. Lane three, Northeastern. Lane four, Gonzaga. And lane five, Navy.
beautifully flat, calm water up there at the start as these crews await the start of the Division One Second Eight D level final. This is Jacksonville, Northeastern, Gonzaga, and Navy. You can see all crews are sitting squared and buried as they as we get underway in just a moment here, taking their final breath for their final race of this 2023 NCAA season. These are the crews that placed fourth and fifth in their respective semifinals, which is what placed them here in this level final here. But they are all out for the points. They are all out for the best races, the best four quarters of racing that they have laid down so far in this season. We're looking at their high strokes, those start sequences where you get the boat up to speed, and then the name of the game from there is lengthen out and keep the boat up to speed. Often it's about the boat that keeps and maintains speed rather than the one that takes the major move. It's a full 2,000 meters of racing, and that requires physical and mental acuity all the way down the course. As we look at this, a beautiful shot from overhead. It does look like Gonzaga was the fastest starter there in lane four, and it is Northeastern along with them in the center that is moving along as well. So it's those two crews, Gonzaga and North Northeastern, who are our early leaders out of the start gates. Uh, Nor uh, Gonzaga maybe has a couple of seats on Northeastern, and those two crews have the better part of half to three quarters or more length on both Jacksonville and Navy, who are the crews in those outside lanes. Northeastern with the fastest speed coming out of those semifinals. Will they show the fastest speed as this race unfolds, or will Gonzaga take the lead and maintain it? Gonzaga may take the lead and maintain it all the way down the course. Always all kinds of strategies. This is the fourth level final for the Division One Second Eight, and uh, again, as we have seen really almost the entire weekend, we've got competition up front. Um, we I talked about it yesterday quite a bit. Very difficult at this level with the amount of qualification necessary. The prior rounds, even at this regatta, to have so much speed that you're blowing anyone away off the water. As you see the blades on the right side, that is Northeastern. Left side, the uh, Navy and White, that is Gonzaga. And then above them on the race course there is Navy in that gold boat with gold blades. And I love it how on Sunday we're going to get even more noise, even more crowd noise. If you've got a friend, a sibling, a daughter in one of these races, you're probably here. And especially if they're an upperclassman or this could be their last race at is the boat from uh, from Gonzaga away from Northeastern. But still still quite a competitive race up front, two connected boats. With just about a thousand meters down, our lead crews have just crossed the thousand meter mark. It has been Gonzaga from the very early on strokes of just before the thousand, maybe 20 strokes or so before the thousand. Northeastern was the aggressor. You could see them just being very direct with the blades and looking to push for a little bit more to see if they could get back into that lead that Gonzaga has held from very early on. It was about a half of a length, and through the move that they took in the latter portion of the second 500, Northeastern was able to come back a few seats, but ever since then, it was almost as if the Gonzaga coxswain was waiting for them to finish their move before Gonzaga then took theirs or followed their plan to go, okay, now that we're into this third 500, here we go, reset let's go for a little bit more and that's exactly what they're doing Gonzaga is starting to stretch out the lead that they had on Northeastern for the early portion of Meanwhile, in the outside lanes, Navy was ahead of Jacksonville early on, but it looks like Jacksonville has worked their way back in as well. 
And as by virtue of that race in the outside lanes, lanes two and lane five in this race, that is pushing Jacksonville a little closer toward the stern deck of Northeastern with the closing portion of this race left to go about 700 meters or so for our still leader Gonzaga mm -hmm. who now has a boat length Lane on Northeastern. Three. That has brought Jacksonville almost to the point of lassoing the very stern deck of Northeastern. Is there enough time or will they run out of race course? Jacksonville, do they have another gear? This is still Gonzaga's race though. Gonzaga still out in front. Will they remain in front? We'll find out as we pass it to Adrian. And thank you, David and Lindsay. That move that Jacksonville is making is so impressive. And again, we've talked about how these teams really are hoping to upend their seedings and improve upon their appearances from years past exactly what Jacksonville is doing right now as they attempt to overtake Navy for that third place position. Up front, it is tight between Gonzaga and Northeastern. Gonzaga holding off Northeastern pretty much from start to finish. Gonzaga now extending their lead out, maybe looking for a little bit of open water as they come into these final strokes. And again, for Gonzaga, this would be a major improvement for them based upon the seedings of this boat. Northeastern did come in with the fastest time coming out of the semifinals, but Gonzaga is flipping that on its head as they take this race from start to finish. What a commanding lead here from the Bulldogs as we come into the final 200 meters. It is Gonzaga that will be taking this final with the Huskies of Northeastern chasing. Jacksonville now in solid third place position. Navy fading back to fourth. But great racing. This is how we want to see these finals go. This is tight. Well done to Gonzaga as they come into the final strokes here. The Huskies of Northeastern back just by a little bit of open water in that second place spot. But here come the Dolphins. Jacksonville really coming in for this final stretch here. Up ending their seating, doing exactly what they meant to do. And here comes Navy. Syracuse, lane five. And you can tell that Jacksonville had a goal there. The elation coming out of the rowers after that finish line proves that they're setting goals and surpassing those goals. That's exactly what this championship is about. We're coming up on final three for the Division I second eight. We'll give you your lane assignments. In lane one, USC. Lane two, Indiana. Lane three, Rutgers. Lane four, Duke. Lane five, Syracuse. Lane six, George Washington. Two minutes.
just under a minute to go here in for the start of the Division One Second Eights Third Level Final. This is for places 13 through 18 in the country. We have some conference rivalries in lanes next to one another here. Uh, some of these crews, they've certainly lined up against one another over the course of the weekend, but throughout the season as well, so familiar with each other's boat speed. But as the season continues to, as you get deeper into the season, you find crews that peak uh, on point. And so here we are, finals day. This is when you want to peak right. You want to lay down your best strokes, learn the most, not just throughout the season, but even over the weekend to make those small technical adjustments that can allow you to go a little faster per stroke that you take down the course. And that's what all of these crews are doing, particularly you see the crews in the center lanes, lanes three and four, were the speediest through the semifinals and were crews that were, were just edged out very early on on the first day, Friday, through the heat. So they're looking for some speed, proving some points here against one another in this race, but also towards the overall picture of this weekend of racing. All crews off very quickly from the start. What will it be as we get better angles from overhead? Who will be our early leaders? Certainly look at Rutgers and Duke to want to be those getting out in front early. One of the things you'll notice next time you see the start platform is that each of the pods where the boats actually uh, uh, touch or are touched by humans uh, into that stake platform. They move in and out, and they do that so that we can make sure that we have perfect alignment of all of these boats. As you see that red boat in the center of the race course from Rutgers that is out uh, on the rest of the field, but just so close. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a fool's errand half the time when we're looking at the first 500 meters to try to really figure out what's going on because uh, there, there even is some back and forth in the first 500. Obviously, there are race plans, and clearly Rutgers decided they at least wanted to have a quick start. They didn't know where that would land them necessarily relative to the rest of the field. But look at what's going on here. Five connected boats, only one off the pace at all. Top of the race course is the boat from George Washington. Everybody else still right in the mix at 7.50 as they come in front of our boathouse here. We will see the margins probably look even closer to our naked eye than we can see with the drones. But it, it continues to be Rutgers, maybe slightly. Uh, if not Rutgers, it is the boat just above them from Duke. Just a few moments ago, Syracuse making a valiant effort to stay up with the speed of Rutgers and Duke, but they are falling off the pace as the strokes continue to count. This all crews lead crew currently through that 750 mark is Duke with a slight edge over Rutgers. Those two have been going back and forth, but Duke right about a deck over Rutgers now, looking to extend, looking very clean to the water, and looking to apply their legs as well as possible. On the inside lane, it is Southern California who has overtaken Indiana. Indiana was hanging in there as well. Those three boats across is Indiana, Southern California, and Syracuse now uh, fighting for those third, fourth, and fifth place spots. Indiana may be slipping back a little bit from the pace, but certainly Southern California is on the move. That USC in lane one on the move of our early and still leaders Duke and Rutgers. Duke to cross the thousand first with Rutgers still hanging on to maybe that deck just off of the Duke valve ball. But Southern California is the fastest mover on the course looking to move through uh, in both Indiana and Syracuse as they chip away at the lead that Duke that Duke and Rutgers had on the field. And here we are in that third 500, and this will show where the efficiency and the legs truly are. Yeah, here comes that boat from Southern California at the bottom of the screen. As it came past us, it did seem like Duke had the advantage on Rutgers. So Rutgers really had the first 500 meters pretty well in hand. Then Duke sort of owned the second 500 meters. 
who's going to completely own the third 500 meters right now. Maybe the fastest mover is Southern California of the top three. Uh, again, these points are going to go towards the team title. This is final three of the Division One second eight. And uh, every single one of these points matters. We've had ties the past few years, and it's come down to tiebreakers. We'll see if that happens again this year as Duke maybe pulls away just a little bit. It's a slight move there from Duke to get a, a little bit more ahead of Rutgers. Southern California, they, they really were game there for a while, Lindsay, for about 400 meters or so. And uh, now they're coming back just a little bit, but they did drop off slightly because they made it pretty close up front. Looks as though uh, Syracuse is also looking in these last 500 meters to make up the ground that Southern California took on them. So based on the angles we see, they may be a little off, and we have seen some good sprints out of Cruz as they clean up and bring it toward the line. Still Duke leading, uh, just a few seats more over Rutgers. Will the sprint? The sprint will come into play here most certainly because that is not enough ground. You can never be far enough ahead, can you, Adrian? Absolutely. That lead that Duke has established really hasn't changed that much between themselves and Rutgers. So Rutgers, a very tenacious crew, just holding tight to that spot, trying not to let Duke slip away anymore. But those two boats pushing themselves so hard that they have left the other crews behind. But the team that I'm watching right now that is really on the move is USC coming out of lane one. USC putting on a huge move there past the 1,000-meter mark, trying to pull even with Rutgers as we come into the final 250 strokes. Keep your eye on the Trojans there against the shoreline. It is Duke up front being chased by Rutgers and USC. In fourth, it is close here between Syracuse and Indiana. Maybe slight edge for Indiana over Syracuse. George Washington in lane six doing a nice job. Keeping pace with these top crews, a little bit behind for them, but great showing here at this championship. Duke for the win. Rutgers in second, USC in third. Now here comes Indiana, Syracuse, and then George Washington. Five minutes. Up next, it will be final four for the Division I first eight. With four boats on the course, in lane two, Jacksonville. Lane three, Navy. Lane four, George Washington. Lane five, Gonzaga. Three minutes. Thank you. 
And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to note that we have a special VIP guest here with us at the NCAA Championships, Major General Roberta Shea from the Navy, former Navy Oars woman, sitting in the two-seat of their Varsity 8 from 1987 to 1990, is here to watch her former team, uh, Navy, support that crew and be a presence here as a, this is a historic moment for her and for Navy. She will be our finish line flag, so we welcome her and celebrate uh, her presence here and the history of that program. You are watching the 2023 Jacksonville NCAA Rowing Championships here from Camden County, New Jersey. My name is David Wyant. I am joined by Lindsay Shoup and Adrian McConnell. And we are bringing you these races as this one gets going. This is the fourth final of the Division One Women's Eight. So these are the top nine athletes for each of these programs. Going for precious team points here and uh, to try to finish 19th in the country in this Division One Women's First Eight. As you see a little bit of wildlife getting out of the way in these first two players, and as we get to the overhead shot, we're seeing a little bit of a chevron in this one, Lindsay, more so than maybe some of the previous races. They were just a little bit uh, tighter at this point. As far as the early strokes go off of the start sequence, that was a hair more chevron pattern, particularly as Jacksonville is just a little bit off of the pace of the remaining crews in on the field. That's George Washington, our current leader, flanked by Gonzaga and Navy. Uh, they're in lanes three, four, and five. Those are your three crews that are creating the chevron. Uh, again, with Jacksonville in lane two, just a, a hair off of the pace in this Division one first eight is C level final. This is four places nineteen through twenty two in the country and right now it is George Washington, that crew that is here for the first time in program history out of the A ten conference. They were also the crew that edged out Northeastern's second varsity eight in the last race. So showing some advancement in that program over the last couple of years will certainly not only look for advancement down the course but over a few more years to come. Nice tight shot there on the crew out of Navy in that gold hole with the gold blades, so it's a yellow hole. They are now the crew that looks to be advancing a little more into that lead that George Washington took early on in the race. Navy also the crew out of the semifinal coming through with the most speed. Gonzaga was the next fastest coming through the semifinals of the crews that are on the course right now. So certainly look for a tight race among those three boats as they all have uh, similar speeds that we've seen in previous races over the course of the weekend. Any lead that George Washington had was by about a half of a length, but now it is Gonzaga that is pressing hard. 
both Navy and Gonzaga bearing on GW's lead, but Gonzaga currently sitting in second and charging hard to stay just a hair ahead of Navy, who is not giving up. These three crews, it is tight. It is going to stay tight. Will the second thousand really tell us? Will it create more separation? We are just about ready to cross into 1,000 meters down, and that lead, again, that George Washington had has been cut down, but they are still maintaining it. We will likely see some moves by each crew, but really the most important move you can make is 200 strokes long, start to finish a full race. So we are through 1,000 meters, and you can see just how close it is. Another tremendous race here at our 2023 NCAA Rowing Championships. Only boat off the paces, but uh, boat bot far bottom right of your screen, which is a boat from Jacksonville. Up front, it's anyone's race, and this one is going to get extremely good for you, Adrian, in terms of really pointing out what is happening because Right now, if, uh, if they threw a tape out in front of these boats, you're going to see half a second or less separating the three that are out in front. Very, very exciting, tremendously close racing, and exactly what you would imagine seeing after a progression system at a national championship regatta. And here we go. Somebody's decided to take a move. It's Gonzaga, top of the screen. Gonzaga, uh, maybe with their first at least big lead of this race. And the boat in the middle, the boat from George Washington, they lost some pace there. It was either that or both Gonzaga and Navy found pace relative to George Washington. About 600 meters or so to go in this race, and Gonzaga, ever since they started to move just a, a little more, maybe an inch per stroke more than Navy was, right around 1,000 meters, it's now an even greater amount per, per stroke. But again, Navy not letting it go, still very tight, looking to come back into the, the push that Gonzaga made there. And it, like, once again, as to be expected, you can never be far enough ahead in these races. You have to every stroke find more. It's not unlikely that with less than 500 meters to go that these athletes are thinking one stroke at a time all the way to the line, especially from a coxswain standpoint, having that lane in between Gonzaga and Navy. Those are the two crews. Gonzaga still with the lead. Navy looking to take it back. Those are your two out in front looking who is going to come away with 19th through 22nd in the country, Adrian. And it does look like the Bulldogs have this one in hand, but Navy, what a gutsy move here by Navy as they come into these final strokes. Navy at the back at the top of the Patriot League, it's so great to see them here again by virtue of this boat. This boat is the one that has made the mark on their team and brought them here to this national championship. And we're seeing exactly why as they come into their final strokes here, as they chase down Gonzaga. Can they catch them by the line? The Bulldogs looking across their port side. Can they hold off this charge by Navy? These two boats pushing each other so hard. George Washington now in the rearview mirror. Jacksonville continuing in fourth. But take a look at this right out in front. Gutsy move here by both Navy and Gonzaga to overtake that lead. Gonzaga and Navy all the way to the line. Too close for me to call. We'll wait for those official results. Great racing there up front between Gonzaga and Navy. And now George Washington in third. And now here come the Dolphins of Jacksonville. Just barely, hundreds of a second celebrate, separating Gonzaga and Navy for the finish of that race. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
set a bar and then the next year another team looks to, uh, looks to even raise that bar further. Here we are in the seed level final and Ohio State is in one of those two middle... Ohio State is the only team to have won the 1v three years in a row. They hold the longest streaks of team titles and 1v titles and here we are in the C final is just a testament to the overall elevation. So a team like that sets the bar. Other teams continue to try to meet that and elevate it from here. It's just so tight off of the start. Perhaps the earliest quick starter is Rutgers. We just saw them come down previously in their second varsity eight, have a tight race with Duke all the way down the course. So look for them to be looking for some early speed as well. But again, here we are. As soon as I say that, Duke had a moment back, and then they peaked right up. Six boats across as we just get into our lengthening sequences, about 350, 400 meters down in this race. Yeah, Lindsay was talking, she was talking about records being out in front. I'm, my mind is kind of swirling right now looking at these six boats. Uh, they're all connected, and this is so good early on. As uh, they come through 500 meters, Everybody right there in the mix still, everybody with a connection, um, just tremendous. And this is a third level final of the women's Division I A, uh, first A. So it may be uh, Rutgers still out there, but man, that is not a comfortable lead. Next to Rutgers is uh, Duke. You're also seeing some good speed at the bottom from Indiana. Just above Indiana is Ohio. What's so amazing is that at the, at the NCAA women's rowing level, sometimes you are seeing athletes in third level finals that might be representing their countries this summer. Uh, it's amazing just the depth 
of these teams as they come through. Oh boy, it's like a, it's like primary colored crayons as they come in front of us here. Rutgers in the red boat, Duke in the blue boat, just below Duke is uh, Ohio State. And we still have four boats with major connection. As they come past us, they approach the halfway point, and we see what they do in the third 500. That coveted third 500, that's where all training, all the strokes on the water, all of the strokes off the water, all of the weight training, it's all going to come into play in this third 500. As the crews crossed 750 meters into the race, it was Ohio State who had nudged a few feet ahead of Duke, who was a few feet ahead of Rutgers at the time. But again, keep an eye. An easy way to discern them is red hull is Rutgers, blue, darker hull blue is is Duke, and then next to them, our current leaders is Ohio State, moving very quickly. Ohio State came through those semifinals with the highest amount of speed on the water with Rutgers next, and then Duke next from them uh, with the rest of the field rounding them out as far as speed that was shown earlier. We've already seen those types of results inverted over the weekend, so, uh, but right now it is, as it stands, Ohio State is looking to be the fastest mover, the fastest all the way down this 2,000 meters. As we approach 750 or so meters to go, Ohio State in the lead with Rutgers now in second, having overtaken that lead that Duke had on them. Rutgers was the quickest starter, then Duke had the next 200, uh, next 500 until Ohio State took over the lead with about 800 meters in, and they are continuing to lengthen from there. But just as I say, it looks like Rutgers is looking to put on some sort of move now to make sure that Ohio State doesn't slip away in this third 500 so that they can then just work on adrenaline and fumes as they get into that last little bit. Make sure that you keep enough overlap, enough contact, that maybe you can nip them in a sprint. But right now, Ohio State and Rutgers are currently one and two as we pro approach 500 meters to go. We will toss it over to Adrian to give you a better look at what's happening on the course. But it's still Ohio State and Rutgers. Rutgers Rutgers is the next fastest mover, if not the fastest mover right now, looking to retake that lead. And that's right, great move there by Ohio, just showing a lot of patience and a trust in that race plan to be that patient and not get off the line and try to win that first thousand. It's really all about what happens at the finish line. And as they continue to just kind of hold off that Rutgers boat, they continue to extend their lead out. So now looking at about a full length lead over Rutgers, but Rutgers chasing hard here. So again, Ohio State came in with the fastest time coming out of the semifinals, but Rutgers right behind them, just barely by a half a second behind coming out of the semifinals. So we're gonna watch these guys all the way to the line and see who has the most effective sprint. Coming into the final 250 meters here, that's what those red buoys signify. It is almost neck and neck here between Ohio State and Rutgers for those top spots. Behind them, it is Duke in the position. Duke is in that third place position, but then take a look at Indiana and USC. Indiana, I believe, has that edge over USC for the fourth place position with Northeastern in six. But here we go, all the way to the line. This is tight. Is it going to be Rutgers or Ohio State? Ohio State holds on to it for the win. Rutgers just behind by a couple of seats, and here, here comes the Blue Devils of Duke. And now Indiana, USC, and now Northeastern. Five minutes.
and we are just minutes away from the start of the fatigue final for our Division I fours. In lane one, Southern Methodist University. Lane two, Michigan. Lane three, California. Lane four, Washington. Lane five, Ohio State. Lane six, Duke. Michigan, California, Washington, Ohio State, Duke, attention. As we await the start here of the Division One floors, this is the second level final, the petite final for places seven through twelve in the country. Again, valuable points on the line as very few crews qualified all of their boats all the way into the grand finals for that ultimate the team title that they're looking for. So every crew out here looking for looking to nab the most points they possibly can for their overall teams. Left to right as the referee reads as SMU, Michigan, Cal, Washington, Ohio State, and Duke coming through the semifinal races that happened yesterday morning. Cal, Washington, and Ohio State were the producers of the most speed. So early on, we will maybe look for them to produce the most speed today, but all six crews out here on the water are looking to lay down the best four quarters of racing so far this year. Earliest, quickest starters. Quickest starters are Cal. Is California right now in lane three? Yeah, and as Lindsay said, this is uh, all of these athletes are looking for their best race of the entire year. This is where you want to peak. Um, assuming you're not going to wear the red, white, and blue. But even so, this is where you want to peak with your teammates and all the camaraderie that goes into national collegiate sports. You're seeing it here at our championship. Continues to be California in the center of the screen. And then it's really anyone behind them. It's too close to call. It's Duke, it's Washington, it's Michigan, it's SMU. They're all right in the mix of, in this petite final of the win. And so California, they made their decision to go start to finish to get as many points as they can for their team and try to finish seventh in the nation in this boat class. And I've mentioned a couple of times that that uh, scenario in Sarasota was, came down to the fours. California was one of those two boats. With California and Washington, and the four is what put uh, the team trophy over the top. You can see the gold jerseys of California, 
They remain out in front, but this is not a comfortable race, Lindsay, as we see it come, a, come in front of us. It's really like four lengths separating the entire field. Cal got out quick, and it looks as though they may have one of the calmest, most reserved rates on the race course. Michigan currently in second place, maybe by just a foot over Washington right now with Duke out there in that outside lane doing a great job keeping up with them with the uh, for places two, three, and four in this race right now. So Duke pacing out there a little challenging since Ohio State has slipped back a little bit, but Ohio State has done well in their four so far this year and is one of those faster boats. So look for them to maybe have a strong second half of the race, even though they're a little off the pace in the first half of the race. Just about three quarters of a length, maybe looking to um, uh, four cow right now as we are about to cross the thousand. But Duke, keep an eye on Duke at the top of the screen there as they also cross the thousand. They look to be in second place right now, having potentially overtaken Michigan at this point and also Washington. They got ahead of Washington a few strokes ago and have overtaken from Michigan as well, which is allowing a secondary race for second, third, and fourth right now to push into Cal's early lead. Cal will certainly need to find another gear to make sure they maintain what lead they have. But will Duke's move through this middle portion put them kind of sneakily, even though they're on the outside lane, into one of those top positions? As I was speaking, it's still those three votes of Michigan, Washington, and Duke who seem to be trading punches, as you would say, David, of who's going to be what valve ball between those three crews will be in second, third, or fourth. That has been exchanged several times over the last couple hundred meters, but one thing that has not changed is that Cal is still out in front by about half to three-quarters of a length. And I had Cal at 36 strokes a minute. In fact, um, I had to double-check my stroke coach a couple times on Duke as you were talking about them. They're about 33 strokes a minute. So uh, we've got some different cadences here, and um, that often does come into play, at least from the standpoint of there's, there's some more speed in some of these boats that we haven't seen yet, and maybe they're holding it for the last 600 meters as we get into those last 600 meters of this uh, Division One Fours second final, the Petit Final, places 7 through 12 in the nation in this boat class. And it's Cal trying to maintain a start to finish and uh, win this thing and take it one to their Berkeley teammates that they possibly can in the first of these three boat classes where we are up in the points in the B and A finals. We're going to give it to you, Adrian. It is Cal. They are pretty commandingly now still in the lead, almost a full length. But uh, the two boats flanking them, Washington and Michigan, are very close to one another. As you see, this good shot from the finish line gives you a little bit more information as to where exactly these crews stand. That's right, and mature racing here by the Golden Bears out front. They really have taken command of this race and do look really relaxed and confident as they continue to hold off a good charge here by Michigan and Washington. Those two crews almost side by side, but with Duke just off of the stern deck of that Washington boat, it is anyone's race for second, third, or fourth. But I'm looking at a big push here right now by the Huskies just off of the stern deck of that California boat. They look to have overtaken Michigan for that second place position. Duke fading back to fourth. Five. SMU right now also in the mix. SMU looking to overtake Duke. As we come up to the line, this is a big push here by Washington. They're eating into that lead by the Golden Bears, but they're going to be able to hold them off. Cal's going to win this. One full length over Washington. And now here is Michigan. And take a look at this. SMU for fourth. Duke at fifth. Ohio State in six. Great last 250 meters there for SMU as they really attempted to overtake and maybe even get into one of those top three positions, but they did come in fourth.
All right, here we go. It's our first grand final of the morning. These are the fours for Division One. In lane one, Virginia. Lane two, Stanford. Lane three, Texas. Lane four, Yale. Lane five, Princeton. Lane six, Brown. As we await the start of the Division One Varsity Fours, this is your grand final places one through six at this 2023 NCAA Women's Rowing Championships. This is for the most points that a four can earn for their team, which is 22 points, with each consecutive position down being just one point less. Last year's winner of this event was Princeton. They are here in this race today. It was Yale, though, that produced the fastest speed on the course out of the semifinals, but very tight racing from all crews across the board in terms of not just side-by-side -side action, but within inter-semifinal uh, times posted. There will certainly be a showdown on the water here among all Virginia. crews, as it is only, uh, there are only four teams with all Texas. three boats in the grand finals. That's Yale, Yale Stanford, Princeton, and Texas. Princeton. Brown. Not only is there a showdown for points and that Attention. overall team trophy, but we also have the stroke seat of the Texas four is actually the older sister of the two seat of the Virginia four. So there are inter-team rivalries happening, but also maybe a little familial rivalry happening and about to unfold as these fours in the Division I fours grand final take off cleanly from the start gate this morning. We've mentioned before where these fours are much more technically responsive, so any small adjustment that you make, any little bobble that you create actually is a little bit more significant simply because each person is a greater proportion of the whole. So a little more technical dexterity perhaps comes into play here as far as these fours go, and that is something that as we get even more fatigued, any little nuance starts to show more and more. But as to be expected at this point in the race, in this grand final, so much tight speed already seen throughout the season, and certainly side-by-side, side, the peak here for this last race of these athletes 
seasons. It is. Uh, we don't expect to see anyone jump out early, and it will be a full 2,000 meter race, I am certain, here. Wow, what a great race. Early on, to be expected for a national championship in the women's four Division for Division One. Is somebody going to throw a haymaker, and where is it going to happen? Ohio Nobody's State. done it yet. There's a good Lane picture of Yale five. from behind. Lane four, that is Yale. You got the picture of them. Maybe they have six inches. I mean, you know. Estimating these distances, as soon as you say it, you're wrong. So uh, you got to really be careful here. But both, all six both connected. This is some of the the latest and closest connection we've had of the entire regatta. But again, it's a progression system, and that's why we're here. We're here to find these are the six fastest women's fours. And we're here to find who the single fastest women's four is Michigan. as they come in front Lane of our three. boathouse. Oh boy, so, so hard to tell what a race going on. I'd love to be one of those cocks. It was, it was Yale who nudged out just a moment ago, but in the last 200 meters or so, Texas has lo looks like they've taken maybe a couple of inches on Yale. Virginia made a solid push through that kind of 400 to 600 meters or so down, and that was pushing them level with Yale, Princeton, and Texas, but it, or Stanford, Princeton, and uh, Stanford, Texas, and Yale. But it is Texas right now as we approach Brown. the thousand that is looking, Lane fighting the most four. with Yale for that first place position to cross that line behind Texas and Yale. That is uh, Stanford there in between the boats that then from the outside, then Virginia, then Princeton, and Brown up on the outside. Princeton and Brown certainly having a battle there coming out of the Ivy League as they cross the thousand at a very similar point. But right now, Texas, just before the thousand, overtook by just a few feet from Yale's early lead. Uh, Virginia. To now be in a position Lane where it looks as though two. maybe they're inching out every single stroke. As it stands, Stanford is starting to fall off of that pace that was being set early on, that was that is now being set and paced by Texas and Yale, and Virginia starting to slip back as well. So Virginia, Princeton, and Brown are now going to battle it out in those outside lanes that Virginia Coxon needs to pay, make sure she pay, stay, pays attention to what's going on on the far side of the course because that's where the level action for them right now is happening. Texas out in the lead, Yale in second by just a couple of feet with Stanford currently sitting in third. This is her medals and a trophy. This is uh, last race of the season for these boats. You see that uh, little dock. If you, you see that dock if you look at the top of your screen. It's about 650 or so meters from the finish line. And it continues to be Texas. And really, Texas pretty patient there early on. They kind of let everybody settle in. Then they decided that they wanted to take a fairly commanding lead after Yale had held one for three or four hundred solid meters. And then behind the two is the boat uh, from Stanford. So those are your top three. And those are three teams that we've really seen do well over the last couple of championships. Should mention at the very top of the race course up there, that boat from Brown. Brown is starting to find some speed. Maybe they're tracking down Stanford just a little bit. Bunch of lanes in between the two. This is getting uh, uh, pretty interesting, even though it's spaced out. I think we're going to see some, some things happen here in uh, the last part of this race for these coveted points in this, this women's four. 
Texas now starting to lengthen out on Yale. Yale currently sitting in second. Brown on the move looking to overtake Stanford with Princeton and Virginia. who's going to need solid sprints here as we come into the last 250 meters. That third place position is so crucial, so keep your eye on the far shore. That's Brown. Brown with that wicked stroke rating. That is a hallmark of their program. But it is all about the Longhorns right now. The women from Texas doing a nice job coming on a little bit later in the race with a lot of patience. But here we go. This is the most effective sprint that I have seen them enact so far at this championship. They have looked so relaxed and so confident. But here they go, a little more aggression there in that Longhorn boat as they continue to pull away from Yale. Yale coming in with one of the fastest times out of the semifinals, just off of the stern deck. Eli doing a nice job there, holding on to that second place spot. It is Texas for the gold. Now open water for them over Yale. And it is Brown walking into that third place bronze medal position. Stanford in fourth, Virginia in fifth, and it is Princeton in fifth. Lane three, Michigan. Lane four, Brown. Lane five, Ohio State. Lane six, Southern Methodist University. We are awaiting the start of the Division I second eight B-level final. This is for places 7 through 12 in the country. In lane 1 is Pennsylvania. Lane 2, Virginia. Lane 3 is Michigan. Lane 4, Brown. Lane 5, Ohio State. And lane 6 is SMU. SMU. 
attention. So, All crews are off and away from the start of the dock as we have a start in this next level final here between Virginia, uh, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Michigan, Brown, Ohio State, and SMU. Quickest potentially off of the start line were those boats out of Brown and Ohio State, but I imagine it's going to stay well within contact. We saw in the fours that it was basically 500 meters before anyone was really able to assert themselves away from the line here. And as these boats go, you go from the dead stop, you pick it up to speed, and then once they're up and running, it's about maintaining that speed. Sometimes we've seen over the weekend that different teams have different strategies, whether it's physical or intentionally psychological. Moves are not necessarily just push your legs more now because once you're going max, how do you go more max? You've got to do it better, cleaner, stay calm, and make sure that you take the most good strokes down the course. Now that we're getting into, as we're about 400 meters in, about to cross the last few strokes before 500 in, it looks as though Ohio State is still one of those fastest movers looking for that early lead. Next to them is Brown, and then on the very inside between Penn and Virginia are the next two crews. As more strokes get taken, Michigan looking to make sure that they aren't slipping back. Potentially they're pushing a little more to make sure they maintain contact with Brown. A couple of seats looking for between uh, Brown and Ohio State. Those two crews are looking to see if they can get half length or at least a quarter of a length on the rest of the field as we're getting into the second 500. But again, again Virginia and Brown, uh, uh, Penn and Brown on those inside lanes that battle is looking to push them, see if one of those two crews can get out into the lead at this point. Now, as we approach 750 meters into the race. Yeah, Brown's true rating is 38. I always kind of keep an eye on that because that's how they like to row. They like to row a little bit higher. In terms of stroke cadence, you see all of these women, they are just bearing the blades and going. This is it, last race of the season. Again, these are precious points, even in a B-level final. These are the second eighth B-level final. And look at this shot. All six boats still in the picture, and they're right in front of us, which means that they are just appro approaching the 1,000-meter point in the race course, and we have connection all the way across Maybe the only boat out of all that is that is just sort of sniffing to try to get back into an overlap is the boat from SMU as they come through the halfway point. And it continues to be the boat from Brown. And then at the bottom of the screen, You've got uh, all the way down there in lane one, you have Pennsylvania, and you have Virginia in lane two. They are there with Brown, and then just Stanford. above Brown on the screen lane is the boat four. from Ohio State. Those are your top four, and uh, look to probably be the top four as they continue to move through these third, third 500 meters, and it starts to hurt and they start to try to maintain their technique. Neck and neck between Penn and Virginia, and that battle between Brown and Ohio State when they crossed around the thousand, looking just before the thousand with us, it looked as though Brown was being very aggressively, very direct to the water, just shoving the boat along, but Ohio State was certainly battling it out for that lead over them, but that push that Brown was making uh, looked as though it was it was it was enough to get them just ahead. But again, mentioned it several times already. You can never be far enough ahead at this level of speed. Brown has a slight edge over Ohio State, but it looks like Ohio State, with about 750 meters to go, about 700 meters to go, is looking to push again. 
still very tight between Penn, Penn and Virginia. Penn with the edge over Virginia right now. Virginia needs to dig, put the blades right in and dig a little bit more, see if they can make sure that they do not let Penn go at this point because when the momentum is with you as you cross the 500, that enables you to a little more confident going into the closing meters. It gives you that extra bit of push, that extra bit of psychological oomph. Still Brown out in front over Ohio State with Ohio State bearing down hard. It is going to be a tight race between those two crews. We will see who has it in the sprint. Brown out in front, then Ohio State. We've got Penn and Virginia battling. But up on the top of the course, keep an eye on SMU, who is charging very, very hard, only Michigan flipping back off the pace. Yep, Brown just maintaining as SMU continues to move. Ohio State still continuing to bear down on Brown. From the angle, it's actually probably much closer between the top two boats there. Pennsylvania has moved away quite a bit now from Virginia. Virginia starting to get tracked down just a little bit by the boat from Michigan. So we'll see if Virginia can stay ahead of Michigan in the last uh, little 300 meters or so left in the race. But it's Brown trying to go start to finish, trying to win the B final of the second eight for Division One. We will pass it off to you, Adrian. They, are, they have been pressed all the way down the race course by Ohio State. What, what's the very end here? And Brown still in that lead position, just by about three feet over Ohio State. But look at the Quakers here. The Quakers again, the shoreline in lane one, coming in third, SMU in fourth, Virginia in fifth, and Michigan in sixth. Brown really adding in to the tally for the points. This is getting interesting. Five minutes. We are just a few minutes away from the start of the grand final for our Division I second eight. In lane one, Princeton. Lane two, California. Lane three, Washington. Lane four, Stanford. Lane five, Texas. Lane six, Yale.
We are less than a minute to go here to the start of the Division I Second Ace Grand Final. This is for places one through six in the nation. The most points available for the second varsity eight is 44 points. So looking to nab those points toward that team total. Left to right will be Princeton, Cal, Washington, Stanford, Texas, and Yale. Blades are squared and buried. That means these athletes know that the race is about to begin. Final adjustments being made by Costas to assure that they are going as straight as possible. Let's await that start signal. Grand final of the second eight for Division One, and another gorgeous shot of nobody really having any sort of water to speak of early in this race. And these points, obviously, very important, but also these women are rowing for a national championship. This is just a different folk class. It's the second eight. Yep, no, a lot of geese there. It looks like in that lane, it looks like maybe that was the uh, Washington lane, possibly. Yale was the 2022 winner in this particular event in the two second varsity eight. It is Yale on that top of your screen, lane six, who is now looking to be the first crew uh, to see if they can look for a little bit of a lead on the rest of the field. But still, if it's anything, it's a matter of feet. Yale did have that very, very tight race with California coming through the semifinal where they were just three tenths of a second off of Cal in the semis, looking to find more speed here. That was just Texas there, who's just a little off of what uh, where Division Yale is, but that's simply more a matter of deception of the, the angle and the fact that Yale is one of our early leaders. Still a major amount of overlap with Princeton, Cal, Washington, Stanford, and Yale as we come through near about crossing into 750 meters down in this race. Until they are directly across from us, I will not even dare call who is out in front. It might be uh, Stanford at this point looking to take over the lead from Yale, and it does look to be Stanford by just a matter of feet over Yale at this point, but Yale charging hard. Yale appearing to have one of the higher stroke rates right now, making sure that they are staying very, very aggressive. Texas, they are just about a length off of Yale. It looks like both Stanford and Yale have just about stern, about stern overlap on Texas. 
But as we've seen out of Texas all weekend so far is that they are a little more composed and then really ramp it up through that second thousand. They look to be composed where they are, even though they are a little off the pace. Right now, Princeton, Cal, and Washington on the other side, still a matter of feet separating them as we get ready to cross into a thousand meters down. Remembering that Texas was your national champion last year, but not in this event. As Lindsay said, it was Yale. And uh, Texas is going to have to start to find some speed here, I would think, uh, to put themselves into the mix enough, get themselves as many points as they can to really go again for another team title. Right now, you've got the vote, the vote from Stanford out in front, but uh, you can see that it's, it's like half of a Chevron, and it's Lane so close. Three. It's, I mean, 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet, it, as you look across this field, and as they uh, come through 1250, 750 meters to go in this championship race for the, the, the sec section one, second eight, What's going to happen? Is anyone going to take any sort of move California. to jab at Stanford? Lane Is Stanford one. going to move away? If I'm in that Stanford boat, I'm, I'm the coxswain. I'm telling my crew, look, you are 600 meters from a national championship. You've got to just do everything you possibly can. And think about all of the time, effort, energy, food intake that you put in this year to get yourself to this point. As we approach 500 meters to go, it's still Stanford out in front, Yale looking to buy hard because Washington is looking to overtake Yale now. Washington is right there, but moving right along with them is Cal, just a matter of a couple of seats separating Cal and Washington. Stanford still the leaders at this point, Yale up there on that outside lane, so between it is Stanford out in front, and then it's very tight between Yale and Washington with Cal in there as well, just a matter of seats. Only Texas and Princeton uh, falling out of those top four right now and, and very, very tight between Texas and Princeton for fifth and sixth at this moment. It will come down to the sprint. And this is it. This is Stanford hunting down a national title. They have been the bridesmaids for the last couple of years, but I know that they are going for it. Coach Derek Burns knows how to put it all together when it matters, and that's what we're looking at here. But look at Washington. Washington with a wicked charge here. This is deadly for Stanford. The Cardinal really has to make sure that they hold off this fast move here by the Huskies. But then also look at California. Pack 10 at the at the front of the pack here, the Pack 12, leading this national championship race. There's Stanford. Here's Washington. California perhaps pushing themselves into a meddling position over Yale. But Yale right there on the charge. This is going to come all the way down to the wire. Stanford holding off Washington, Yale, and California. It's the Cardinal for the win. Huskies in second. So close between California and Yale. Princeton in fifth. And Texas in sixth. Photo finish there for that third place position. Wait to see the official results. Five minutes.
that last race will stay unofficial until approved by our uh, committee and referees. But it is Stanford that took the win. And now unofficially, it is Washington in second, California in third, Yale in fourth, Princeton in fifth, and Texas in sixth. Again, those are unofficial results. away from the start of the petite final for our Division I first eight. In lane one, California. Lane two, Virginia. Lane three, Syracuse. Lane four, Michigan. Lane five, Southern Methodist. Lane six, Brown. final of the women's first eight for division one and everything looks clean here early through the first hundred or so strokes interestingly uh, Lindsay informing me that it was just a two ten second difference between Michigan and Virginia in the prior round These are the fastest boats for these teams, these respective teams. And they are plowing through these first 250 meters. Beautiful rowing and wow, just looking at how close it is all the way across the board. Again, precious points for the teams up for grabs. Team trophy not quite as uh, straightforward as maybe it has been the past couple of years where even uh, somebody Division like me who's not great at math was eight. able to start Grand figuring Canada. out some of uh, what was going on with the team. Maybe your early leader lane three Syracuse just a slight slight lead though. Syracuse there, one of the fastest speeds coming through the semifinals, Syracuse, Michigan, and Virginia, but all three crews came through with times of 619 points. 
something. But, of course, that race is done, and now we're lined up alongside one another, and it is Brown out there on the outside as well, and as Brown made a charge there right before they crossed into 500 meters, it kind of lit, lit a fire under SMU, who is now on the charge, and definitely in front of Brown now. It was Brown over SMU, and now SMU is in front of Brown. That race on the outside lanes is uh, allowing those two crews to stay up in contact with what's happening in the middle. Syracuse was the early leaders, but it looks like SMU is the most aggressive crew on the field right now, right next to Brown. Brown also looking very aggressive as well. And as those two battle it out on the far side of the course, just, just past 750 meters to go, it looks like SMU... SMU in that dark colored hole is now our leader with Brown contesting buying back and forth with them. Those two are fighting hard, but both have now slipped past Syracuse. Next to SMU is Michigan in that next lane. And then on the inside, we have Cal and Virginia. Virginia ahead of Cal, but Michigan ahead of both of those two crews with SMU and Brown fighting hard. Brown rowing the highest, but they also look very direct to the water and very aggressive with the legs. Looks like Brown wants to take the first 1,000. SMU does not want to give it up. Coming through 1,000 meters, you can see... Not a whole heck of a lot separating the entire field. This is the B final for places 7 through 12 in the country. The NCAA Rowing Championship. And just really trying to continue to hang on to Syracuse. But up there uh, above them is that boat from SMU that has found some tremendous speed particularly starting at about 500 meters. And they do appear to have a slight advantage now on Syracuse. Also with them at the very top of the screen continues to be Brown. Brown continuing to have a nice regatta throughout. As you see that shot of Michigan and SMU growing away from the drone. And it does look like it continues to be SMU. Will the Mustang continue to hang on and take it all the way now? They, uh, they really showed some metal. They didn't get too upset early on that Syracuse took the lead. And they've taken it back as we approach 500 to go. SMU out in front as we cross 500 meters to go. Brown right there with them as well. Syracuse not letting it go easy. They are looking to crawl back into SMU's lead, which looks like Syracuse may be in second, if not vying for that lead. Very tight between Michigan and Virginia, which is exactly what happened in that semifinal. It's going to be a sprint between those crews. Will that the last 500 meters allow them to push back into what Brown had on them, which is what's happening right now. It's still about half a length or more for Brown, but this last push could be enough. SMU still out in front. Syracuse looking to overtake that lead, but SMU is still there. Brown still in third, close between Michigan and Virginia, with California rounding out the field here as we approach the end. Pennsylvania lane two. Racing here up front between SMU and Syracuse. SMU really turning those seedings on its head. They came into the 50 final rank 12th in this boat category, and here they are taking this 50 final. This would be a seventh place finish in the nation. What a race here for the Mustangs. But just behind it is a hard charging Syracuse. Syracuse with such a fast start to be eight throughout this season. And they're proving that yeah. speed right now. Lane Brown is one. third, holding off a nice charge here by Michigan up front. But it is the Mustangs for the win. This is huge. Syracuse with that third place finish, followed by Brown, Michigan, Virginia, and now California.
five minutes. Congratulations to SMU on that definitive win. Unofficial results have them winning that petite final, again, for a seventh place finish in the nation in the varsity eight. Syracuse in second, Michigan in third, Brown in fourth, Virginia in fifth, and California in sixth. Again, these are unofficial results. We are just a few minutes away from the biggest race of the day. This is the Division I first eight with Yale in lane one. Pennsylvania in lane two. Stanford, lane three. Princeton, lane one, uh, lane four. Washington, lane five. Texas, lane six. Two minutes. As we await the start here of the last race of the 2023 NCAA women's rowing season and of this championship, the most points on the line here for any team in this varsity eight, 66 points available, places one through six will be decided. We've already seen some tight racing throughout the weekend, but even three of the crews here, Penn, Princeton, and Texas came through here in the same semifinal and just one second separated those three crews. Princeton came through the semis about a half a second over Penn, who came through about a half a second over Texas. So again, we are going to see more tight racing. Last year's winner of this event was Texas. That's gonna be Texas in lane six right now. If they were to win this event, that would give them three years in a row. That would be a tie for the most years in a row that any team has won this particular event. Last one, three times in a row by Ohio State. Also of note is a strong showing here by the Ivy League with Yale, Penn, and Princeton all in the same race. An Ivy League showdown, a nationwide showdown. We've got some Pac-12 schools here, and we've got Texas there in lane six as well. And due to my less than stellar math, I do believe that if Stanford wins this race, that Derek Burns will get his 
uh, Division One Women's Rowing Crown. He has won at every level of women's rowing, starting at the high school level, where he uh, had dominant crews at both Oakland Strokes and Los Gatos. He moved up to Stanford and immediately won two straight national championships in the lightweight category. And uh, he's been the runner-up, unfortunately, the last couple of years. But if I'm doing the math correctly, if his women can get across that line first, he will win the big prize. Here we go. Last race. The most coveted race. This is the Division One First Eight A Final. Very tidy blade work there off of the start for all crews all the way across. You can barely see differences in the silhouettes among any of them. That is exactly what we've grown to see here at the Division I First Eights level. There are athletes that have raced for their respective countries, Olympic teams, national teams here, U23 teams. Some of the athletes in each of these boats even raced with one another in the United States under-23 crews over the last couple of years. So you have teammates within schools and even teammates among other groups, uh, even across boats. So it makes it for very interesting, certainly very competitive and fun racing at the end of the day. It's about speed, but it's all about getting out there and having fun with it as well and learning what you can every stroke down the course. Early on as we approach 500 meters in, just about 10 strokes from the 500 meter mark, it does look like Stanford, Princeton, Washington, those crews there, Pennsylvania, those are your four center lanes. So Penn, Stanford, Princeton, and Washington, the four center lanes are the fastest movers on the field. Possibly Washington and Stanford out there looking to be our early leaders, but really, it, me, the, the line that matters the most is that finish line rather than just that first 500, which we are well past now. Great pictures of these crews as they charge down this race course, this beautiful flat race course that we've had in Camden County, New Jersey for these championships. Uh, the weather has been just tremendous. Not too hot, not too hot but more importantly, the water has been flat throughout the championship. Stanford starting to assert themselves, starting to see what they can do here, starting to maybe smell a national championship. You can see relative to the other boats, they're right in the center there. They are moving every time they drop into the water are the cardinal. And as they come past our boathouse, they do have uh, almost a half-length lead on, it looks like, uh, the boats from both Princeton and Pennsylvania. Also, just above Princeton on the race course is that boat from Washington as well. Those are your, excuse me, top five. Got in, in lane six, you've got Texas. As they came through the second half of the, the second 500, crossing into that 1,000 now, all boats are just crossing into that 1,000. It was Stanford by just a few seats over Washington with Princeton next after them. Washington trumped Stanford earlier, or trumped Princeton earlier in the weekend, but Princeton made a push right there that kept them just a couple of seats off the bow ball of Washington. The angle that we see here is a little bit off, so Stanford's lead is not as comfortable as it may seem. It is very tight, and the more that Princeton pushes on Washington, that's going to drag both of those crews up into Stanford's lead. Stanford does look very composed, though, so keep an eye on whatever speed they will ramp up from there. Yeah, those three boats are the ones that are now deep into this third 500. Step 
separating themselves from the rest of the pack. Stanford out in front, Washington and Princeton now in second and third respectively with Washington lengthening out from Princeton as they get deeper into the third 500, maybe 700, 750 meters to go. Penn and Yale falling off the pace just a little bit. Yale the most off of the pace that is being set by Stanford, Washington and Princeton. Texas looking to ramp up right now. It looks as though Texas is gaining ground on Princeton. It looks like they want to lasso that stern deck and bring themselves up there as well. Maybe a little bit of momentum in there as either there is a short, a little bit of fading happening. I dare say fading because all of these boats are moving very, very fast. But it is Stanford still out in front, crossing into the last 500 first with Washington charging hard. Texas pushing, coming out of the fourth place position right now, pushing hard, seeing if they can catch Princeton. And then it's Penn on the inside fighting now. Penn, look, it's that Ivy League, uh, that rivalry happening there. Penn looking to overtake Princeton and Yale still just a hair off the pace. But look at Stanford still out in front, Washington in second. We'll give it to you, Adrian. Last race of the day. This is uh, for the big trophy. And uh, how are they going to finish up? It's Stanford out in front. It is Stanford out in front, indeed. They have, again, been here in this position where they are challenged by crews from all over the nation. But Stanford, this year, is leaving nothing on the table. They swept. Uh, they, they took that Pac-12 conference title. The last time that they won a national championship was in 2009, right here on the Cooper River. So maybe there's something in the water here as the Cardinals barrel down the course towards that national championship. The Huskies just off of their stern in that second place position. Princeton and Penn deadlocked for third. Texas in fifth. Yale in sixth. But take a look at Penn. Stanford for the win, four seats for them over Washington. Princeton in third, Penn in fourth. Texas in fifth and Yale in sixth. That will be the national championship going home to California, the Cardinal of Stanford. Great overhead shot there of our unofficial winners out of the Stanford crew. That's their first varsity eight to round out this morning of Division One NCAA Rowing Championships. The last two years, Stanford has been the runner-up to it. Lost to a tiebreaker last year, three-way tie the year before that. Washington, Texas, and Stanford have kind of been battling it out for the last couple of years. I will not say anything official on anything because the math for me is not great either, David, and there has been so much intermixing, which again is just yet another layer of how competitive the Division One NCAA Rowing, NCAA Rowing Championships has become. So as they look to row back to the dock, certainly with smiles on their faces, having taken that event, the Cardinal of Stanford will close out their NCAA Rowing season with a win in Varsity 8.
thank you. All right. It is a pleasure to begin the awards ceremony for the 2023 Division I NCAA Rowing Championships. First, let's congratulate all teams on their outstanding achievements on and off the water. And thank our gracious hosts, Temple University and the Camden County Boathouse. <laughs> Presenting the awards is our Division I Committee Vice Chair, Thad Satri. First up will be the third place boat for this year's NCAA Division I-4. In third place, Brown. And now for our runner-up. And the Division One Fours is Yale. And now your 2023 Division I-4 Grand Champion, Texas. Jane McGee, Abigail Dawson, Cassandra Corby-Kuczynski, and Co Anna Garrison, and Coxon Olivia Fogarty. This year's NA NCAA Division I second varsity eight is California.
Congratulations, California. The runner-up boat in this year's NCAA Division I Second Varsity Eight, Washington. And now, your 2023 Division I NCAA Second Varsity Eight National Champion is the Cardinal of Stanford. <laughs> Coxon Carolyn Kennedy, Isabella Battistoni. Alice Baker, Fiona Mooney, Iris Cluck, Nora Goodwillie, Rebecca Lee, Julietta Camahort, and Heather Schmidt. And now for the awards for the first eight. The third place vote in this year's NCAA Division I National Championship, Princeton. Now for your runner-up in the Varsity 8 division, Washington.
And now your 2023 NCAA Division I Varsity 8 Grand Champion, Stanford. Louise Bachman, Celia Dupree, Annabelle Bachman, Lucy Burrell, Annika Jeffrey, Aja Jakowski, Caitlin Gildersleeve, Letty Cabot, Coxon Rachel Miller, Now let's introduce the top four teams at this year's national championships. The fourth place team in this year's Division I Rowing Championships, Texas. Will coaches and support staff, as well as the team, come forward to accept your award? Congratulations, Texas, on a fantastic regatta and overall season. And the third place team in this year's 2023 NCAA Rowing Championships, Princeton.
Washington. And now, for your 2023 Division I NCAA Rowing Championships runner-up, is Washington. And now your 2023 national champion, Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> 